So now we'll talk about the synthesis of ethers, and while technically you can make an ether with an SN1 reaction, most commonly you're just going to be on the hook for knowing how to make an ether with an SN2 reaction. Uh, and we call this the Williamson ether synthesis. So uh, one of the only important reactions involving ethers, in this case synthesis, not reaction of, but uh, that you need to know uh, as far as ethers go. And so uh, the crux of it is it's an SN2 reaction, so, and it involves an alkoxide ion as a strong nucleophile, and then an alkyl halide, usually, as an electrophile. And we're simply just going to do backside attack and kick off the halogen, and voila, we have an ether. Now this alkoxide you have to make, and generally make it from the corresponding alcohol. And we just need to deprotonate it. So to make the alkoxide, and if you recall though, to deprotonate a normal alcohol, not a phenol, uh, something like sodium hydroxide is generally not going to work. You've got to use something stronger in sodium, uh, metal, kind of a, a redox deprotonation here is a little funky, uh, or lithium or potassium or sodium hydride will all get the job done. Uh, so again, redox deprotonation, a little bit funky, uh, but this is generally the approach then. So you start off with an alcohol, and in step one you deprotonate it, and then in step two you do an SN2 reaction, and then you're done. So oftentimes we make you look at this backwards though as well. Sometimes we'll give you the ether product and then say what's the best way to make it? And the best way to make it you want to focus on the synthesis. And the question is would you rather do backside attack on this carbon or would you rather do backside attack on this carbon? Because you have a chance of making either one of these carbon oxygen bonds in the Williamson ether synthesis. So and the question is which one gets to be the alkyl halide? So. And in this case, whichever side gets the oxygen the alkoxide, the other side is going to be the alkyl halide. And so in this case, we've got a primary carbon over here, and then we've got a secondary carbon over here. And for SN2, the primary halide would be the best. And so you'd realize, okay, that it's this bond we actually want to make. So, and we would rather choose that side to be the alkyl halide, and the other side to be the alkoxide. So, and then obviously we just make this from the corresponding alcohol in the same fashion we just did. So that's kind of how you break this apart and look at this kind of from a, a retro synthesis perspective. Whichever side of the ether is least substituted, that's the one you want to make the alkyl halide. The other side will be the alkoxide. So now we want to take a look at the reactions of ethers, and really there's just one major reaction to worry about here, and that's the acid hydrolysis of an ether. In this case, we're going to react it with HX, where HX is either HCl, HBr, or HI. Uh, in this case, I've got an example with HBr, and the net result is we're going to break both carbon-oxygen bonds and replace the bond to oxygen with the corresponding halogen. With HBr, that's bromines. Uh, with HI, that'd be iodines. With HCl, that'd be chlorines. Uh, and the idea is that it'll do both as long as you add excess of the hydrohalic acid. Uh, if kind of take a look at the mechanism here, the mechanism is just a little bit funky. Uh, but in this case, first thing we're going to do is protonate. So and we'll also form a bromide ion here. So and it turns out that mechanistically here, uh, if this is a tertiary carbon or a secondary carbon will go SN1. If it's a primary or methyl carbon will go SN2, and we're referring to this carbon right here and this carbon right here. So we've now got a good leaving group. An oxygen with three bonds and a plus charge is a good leaving group in the same way that water was a good leaving group, whereas an, uh, an alcohol did not have a good leaving group. So same kind of thing. You protonate an alcohol, the OH becomes water, becomes a good leaving group. Same thing here. You protonate an ether, so and your alkoxy leaving group, which is poor, becomes a good one because it's going to be an alcohol. And in this case, it generally is going to leave from the more substituted side first. You know, let's do that in red. So, and from there, we'll have a secondary carbocation. We'll also have our alcohol. And from there, the carbocation potentially has a chance to rearrange. This one won't. And then bromide's going to come in and attack. And that's going to get us this product right here. So, and then this product right here will just form if we react it with the second equivalent of HBr. And I won't go through and show the mechanism, but in this case, because this carbon here is a primary carbon, this would actually end up going SN2, whereas over here all of this happened SN1. So very similar to what we saw with alcohols. So it turns out here we're going to get a little bit of a special case with what is called a phenyl ether. So if you've got a benzene ring on one side of the ether, uh, 
not quite going to do what you think it's going to do. So in this case, normally we looked at this and said, oh, this carbon's attached to the oxygen, this carbon's attached to the oxygen, and we can break this bond, and we can break this bond. We'll find out we can't break this one in, in this case. Uh, that bond is not capable of being broken. This one is primary, and uh, on that side it'll go by an SN2 reaction. But the other side, the key here is this is an sp2 carbon. And with an sp2 carbon, you might recall, you can't do sn1 or sn2. And that's why we're not going to be able to break this bond. Uh, so it turns out with the first equivalent of hi here, we're going to end up with phenol on one side. And we'll end up, in this case, with hi, the alkyl iodide on the other side, as you saw right there. So, But with phenol here, now we might be able to protonate that phenol. And so technically, we might get as far as, that's an ugly H, uh, we might get as far as protonating it right there, but we cannot let the water leave. Again, that carbon right there is an sp2 hybridized carbon. If the water were to up and leave, the carbocation that would result would be even less stable than a primary carbocation, and those don't generally form. This is definitely not going to form. So, And then backside attack is completely blocked from the reverse by the pi electrons in the benzene ring. So no SN1, no SN2, and so we're done. And that's why phenol just plain old stays phenol here. Uh, so you got to be a little careful. With ethers, usually uh, with excess you know, HCl, HBr, HI, you're going to get two alkyl halides, but not with phenyl ethers. Be careful.